Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be busting 10 common myths about moisturizers. Myth number one, moisturizers with ceramides are the best way to repair a damaged skin barrier. Now, ceramides, they are a critical part of barrier function, but adding ceramides to moisturizers is not the only way to help improve the health of the moisture barrier and for barrier recovery. Urea and lactic acid, when applied topically in moisturizers, can help boost up endogenous production of skin's natural moisturizing factors, including ceramides. And acidic product formulations help reestablish and preserve the acid mantle. Moisturizers formulated with hydrophobic ingredients like cholesterol and fatty acids, they actually help in reestablishing the skin barrier by simply limiting penetration of irritating ingredients, kind of tipping the balance in favor of barrier recovery. So there are multiple ways to help with barrier recovery besides just picking up a ceramide moisturizer. But of course, they are good ingredients in moisturizers, but you know, if you happen to be using a moisturizer that does not have them, don't think that it's not gonna do anything for your skin barrier. Myth number two, you need separate moisturizers for separate body sites. This is not true either. Moisturizing can benefit the skin on any body site, and moisturizers, they have typically three types of ingredients at their backbone, humectants, which pull water into the top layer of the skin, emollients that smooth down skin cell edges, and occlusives that help reduce water loss out of the skin. But many moisturizers also have antioxidants and other ingredients that help with either barrier recovery, healing from oxidative stress, minimizing redness and irritation, or even improving hyperpigmentation. And there's no reason to limit use of these beneficial ingredients in moisturizers to just your face. So you don't need a separate moisturizer for your body or your face. Oftentimes it boils down to a matter of personal preference. Moisturizers for the body often are thicker in formulation. They have more thickening ingredients. Some people find that that is too heavy to tolerate on the skin of the face, and so they prefer a product formulated for the face. Skincare marketing will have you go down this rabbit hole of chasing different moisturizers for different body sites, hence the popularity of eye creams. There's no reason to be using a separate eye cream other than you know maybe you like it um, simply for moisturizing the skin around the eyes. So moisturizer you use on your face should be sufficient to moisturize the skin around the eyes. Likewise, neck moisturizers, I even use those <laughs> dedicated neck moisturizers. Why? I like the formulations. The skin on the neck is thinner, but you certainly do not need a separate moisturizer for your neck. I think the only body site that has not got its own moisturizer is the ears. So if you're a skincare company out there, you could just focus on ear care because I haven't seen actually any products marketed for the ears, like ear serums. <laughs> Oh uh, God, I think I'm gonna create a monster. Now the skin on the face, the stratum corneum, that's that top protective waxy layer, it is thinner than other body sites. And for that reason, some people find that certain skincare products, including moisturizers, burn and sting when applied to the face. If that is the case and you've purchased a product, you can't take it back to the store, definitely consider using it on the body. You may tolerate it just fine and that way you're able to use it up. So there's no rule that says that you have to, to follow follow the body site rules when it comes to moisturizers. They, they, any body site could benefit from using a moisturizer and you don't need a bunch of different moisturizers for different body sites. Myth number three actually extends to all skincare products. There are moisturizing ingredients that clog pores. Pore clogging ingredients, it's the pseudoscience, you guys. Based on antiquated rabbit ear models, there is no list of ingredients that actually are proven to clog pores when applied to the skin that are found in skincare products. True comedogenic ingredients are actually never encountered in skincare products. Now, you may find that certain moisturizers or skincare products maybe aggravate your acne. There's also a type of irritant contact dermatitis called an irritant folliculitis that looks similar to acne but resolves much more quickly. And that can appear almost immediately after using a product. It's simply just irritation around the follicle leading to little bumps that look like acne. Now that can happen in some people with certain heavy, heavier moisturizers, 
but it's not it's not a guarantee that if you use this type of product or this product with this family of ingredients it's going to break you out so don't follow those lists that they have online of like pore clogging ingredients i think they just confuse people terrify people and just make skincare way more complicated than it ever should be um, so there isn't a set of ingredients that is confirmed to clog pores in skincare products Myth number four, you can never have too much moisturizer. Oh, that's actually false. You certainly can overdo it with moisturizer. Heaping on and piling on more moisturizer, it doesn't make your skin more moisturized. Instead, you just end up burning through products. In all actuality, you certainly can over moisturize, although it is pretty hard to do that, but you can overdo it. And what can end up happening is you can over hydrate the top layer of the skin, and that over hydration actually ends up tipping the balance of the barrier function towards more water loss out of the skin and allowing for more irritating things to get in. So overdoing it with moisturizers could get you there. And by overdoing it, it's kind of a hard call, like how much is too much? It's pretty hard to do, but there are some extremists out there who really, really, really love their skincare products that potentially could run into problems of overdoing it. So say for example, you are doing a, a ton of sheet masks, layering it with you know, moisturizer after moisturizer, after hydrating serum, applying then Vaseline all over it, you may actually end up overdoing it. It's not a guarantee that you'll run into problems, but you, you potentially could overhydrate the top layer of the skin. It's pretty uncommon. Or, you know, if you just love moisturizer so much, you're putting it on all the time when you really don't need to, then that potentially could, you know, tip you over to a overly hydrated stratum corneum. It's a, it's a hard call though. I mean, how much is too much as far as reapplying? It depends on the body site. You shouldn't really need to be reapplying moisturizer all day on the face, but where you likely will need to reapply moisturizer a lot is on your hands. Because think about it, you're touching things. If you do wet work, I always encourage people who do wet work, like washing dishes by hand, if you work in a kitchen, to have some Vaseline petrolatum ointment and each time they wash their hands, rinse off the cleanser to just go ahead and start applying Vaseline to really help with barrier recovery. But if you're just sitting there and it's not particularly dry out, you don't necessarily have dry hands, you don't really need to be doing that. So it's a situational thing as to how much and how often with moisturizers. But to get to the meat of the myth, yes, you can overdo it with moisturizer and simply putting more and more moisturizer on, it's not gonna make Make your skin more moisturized. Here's a common myth that your skin will become addicted to moisturizers so that when you stop using them then your skin will become very dry. This is a myth. In reality moisturizers while they benefit dry skin, they help with barrier recovery, they're not necessarily going to be a cure for dry skin. So if you have an, an underlying condition or an exposure that is drying out your skin, moisturizers will improve the dry skin, but as soon as you stop them, you're still gonna have that underlying skin condition you're, or you're still going to be expo have that exposure. And the moisturizer, once you remove it, it's not because it didn't cure those issues, well, then you're gonna end up having dry skin. But it's not because your skin became somehow dependent on moisturizers and now you've got you know, rebound worsening dryness from no longer using a moisturizer. That simply does not happen. Remember, your skin turns over um, every 28 days. Your skin barrier is turning over, shedding. There's no memory being formed of the you know, CeraVe cream you used last week. Along that same line, myth number six, moisturizers will cause your skin to stop making its own moisturizing factors, leading to worsening dry skin, more prominent wrinkles. That is also a myth. If anything, many moisturizing ingredients like urea and lactic acid and ceramides actually can stimulate endogenous production of your skin's own natural moisturizing factors and ceramides and help, again, with barrier recovery. So they don't you know, make your skin lazy um, <laughs> at all. It's not as though you're gonna stop making hyaluronic acid because you have been putting it on your skin. Now with age, ceramide production declines and so you're more likely to have dry skin. So if you have been using moisturizer all of your, you know, your whole adult life, 
and then one day you stop in your in your 50s or 60s and your skin is a lot drier it's not because your skin became lazy and stopped making ceramides and things like that it's part of natural aging myth number seven I have oily skin, I do not need to use a moisturizer. Sebum, yes, it does have some moisturizing properties and it does help reduce water loss to a certain extent, but you certainly can over irritate your skin with products, ingredients, exposures that impair the surrounding skin barrier leading to more water loss, dryness, and irritation. Now, if you have oily skin, certain moisturizers are going to not feel as comfortable to you because they may be too greasy on your already oily skin. I suggest choosing moisturizers that are formulated with silicones. Typically, these are branded as oil-free, and the reason is that silicones like dimethicone, cyclomethicone, they allow for better evaporation of sweat and they have shine reducing properties. They feel more lightweight, not greasy or heavy on the skin as opposed to petrolatum, which can feel greasy on the skin. Um, but no, moisturizers, they do help people with oily skin and people who have oily acne prone skin also benefit from using moisturizers because they help reduce the dryness and irritation that can occur with a lot of topical acne medications like benzoyl peroxide, for example. And they also reduce the irritation that would otherwise aggravate the acne. Myth number eight, I only need to use moisturizers when my skin is dry. That is a myth, obviously, because I've been stating it in this video a while. Um, it's a myth because you don't wanna wait until your skin gets dry to start using moisturizer. Moisturizing during key times when your skin is likely to start losing more water, namely after bathing, is a great way to prevent dry skin flares especially if you have eczema that is a key part to eczema management is moisturizing even when your skin condition is under control and you don't have ne necessarily dry skin continuing the moisturizer especially after bathing is key for reducing water loss out of the skin that would otherwise flare the eczema but for everybody else um, moisturizing in these key times namely after bathing can also help in reducing bouts of dry skin in the future likewise with the hands especially you know if we start, you start washing your hands a lot more frequently, especially in the winter months when we're indoors, cold and flu viruses are more of an issue because we're in close proximity to one another. We're washing our hands even more. Of course, with everything going on in the world, we're washing our hands a lot anyways. But what I'm saying is like, you know, don't wait until your hands get dry and irritated to start moisturizing. Make it a habit that when you wash your hands or you're washing your hands more frequently to be reapplying a hand moisturizer or hand cream. Again, you don't necessarily need a dedicated hand cream, but for convenience sake, they tend to you know, be something you can take on the go. But yeah, you don't need to wait until your skin becomes dry to benefit from using moisturizer. Plus moisturizers, they often have ingredients like niacinamide, licorice root that are anti-inflammatory and help with things like hyperpigmentation and redness that you can be benefiting from as well. All right, this is another myth that I see a lot, especially over on Instagram when I do my weekly Q and A's, I'm often getting questions. Can you recommend a moisturizer that will not make me oilier? There is no moisturizer or family of ingredients that has anything to do with sebum production, oil production. Oil production from your pore is governed by hormones and genetics. Stop this belief that there's gonna be a family of ingredients that is going to influence that oil production. It's really not that. Don't give products that much credit. So I think being aware of the fact that your oiliness is going to fluctuate depending on your hormones. If you're under a lot of stress, certain foods in our diet can contribute to more oil production. We have some growing evidence that of course, eating processed sugary foods can spike insulin-like growth factor, and that can lead to more oil production. Check out my video on how sugar affects the skin. Now, some people also find that consuming skim cow's milk leads to more oiliness, more acne breakouts. Stress impairs healing, and stress hormones can drive more oil production. And then, of course, the menstrual cycle is another culprit in suddenly oily skin. 
and medications you may be taking as well. I think what people perceive as oilier is shine from products. Some products do look shiny on the skin. Now, again, I suggest for those of you out there who have particularly oily skin, choosing moisturizers that are formulated with silicones. They're often, again, labeled as oil-free because they have shine-reducing properties. All right, and then last but not least comes to those of you who like to layer a hydrating serum, toner, essence, whatever you wanna call it, underneath your moisturizer. The myth is that you need to allow each layer to dry before going on with the next. Yeah, you don't need to wait in between layering different hydrating like serums and moisturizer. You don't need to wait for each layer to dry. If anything, it's best to apply these hydrating products to the skin after cleansing while it's still a little bit damp to really get those humectants into that top dead layer of the skin and hold on to that water. There's better skin penetration of those ingredients at that time. And then layer the moisturizer on right away to really, again, moisturizers are gonna have some of those humectants too. They're gonna have occlusive ingredients to really trap all that hydration in. So you don't need to wait for the hydrating toner or essence to dry before going on with the next layer. The one time when you really want to allow your moisturizer to set up and dry fully before going on to the next layer is if you are somebody who um, uses a moisturizer underneath sunscreen. I do suggest in that situation allowing the moisturizer to set up and dry fully before coming on with your sunscreen to allow the sunscreen to set up properly. If there's any moisture on the skin when you go putting sunscreen on, the filters are not likely to set up properly. If it's a water resistant sunscreen, that is a mess. <laughs> you get like all this pilling and clumping of the water resistant sunscreen. So allow it to set up and dry fully before putting on sunscreen on over it. All right, you guys, those are the 10 myths about moisturizers. I hope this video was helpful to you all. And on the end slate is gonna be a video for you to watch. I don't know which one yet. Related to moisturizing. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.